My name's Ed Hathaway, and this is my wife, Tara. And what we're going to do is we're making this video so that we can tell you a little bit about our story with the Church of Scientology, specifically with FLAG, service organization, and uh, the L rundowns that we did, that I did, actually. And so this story is about what happened to us as a result of doing those processes and being involved in the Church of Scientology. Uh, right now we are not involved with the Church of Scientology and probably as we speak we are being declared suppressive people. Uh, we certainly will be after doing this video, um, but uh, our intention is just to tell you the truth about what happened to us and what uh, our lives have turned out to be after doing those rundowns and getting involved with the church and um, you know the high price services that they offer. So uh, we're going to start by telling you how we got involved in Scientology. But before we get into some of the other information, I'm going to go ahead and give you my email address so that any of you who'd like to get in touch with me uh, can send a, um, an email to me. This is the address, using high tech here, uh, d-o-c-h-a-t at lycos.com. And uh, anytime you'd like to send me an email with any type of question, uh, or any kind of comment, whether it's a criticism or some help that you might need, I'll be more than glad to respond with you, uh, usually the same day. <coughs> now, um, Tara, I'd like you to tell them a little bit about how you got involved in the church, and then I'll get into my story a little bit. Well, it was basically shortly after high school I had moved to Dallas, Texas, and uh, a bookseller sold me a book. I read it, and... Uh, then I was interested in finding out more about it, so I went to the local mission there in Dallas. So um, basically I was public for close to a year and then staff for six to seven years and in the Sea Org for a couple of years with a flag, it was called the Flag Bureau back then, uh, mill management. So uh, basically I've been very well connected and I also worked with the WISE group as a supervisor in the porch room. So, um, I'd say pretty much since 76, it is now the year 2001, and we pretty much disconnected five years ago. Yeah, for the most part. So. Matter of fact, this is today's paper, so that you can see the date. Um, it is, um, it's, it's actually Sunday, February 11th, 2001, just for the record. <laughs> Now, how, how I came into Scientology was I was a, um, about a, a third year chiropractic student in uh, the Atlanta area, and one of my mentors at the time had become involved with the Church of Scientology, and uh, he shortly thereafter disconnected. I think he got declared suppressive. Um, but what happened was he turned me on to the management technology, and that was really what interested me because I wanted to become successful quickly after I got out of school and I knew that uh, anything I could do to learn more about business was probably going to help me so he introduced me to L. Ron Hubbard's management technology and so I became very interested in that and I connected with some people who were part of da Dr. David Singer's consultant group uh, and that's how I became connected into Scientology and I got very interested in the management technology. Uh, I read Dianetics, got interested in auditing, went down to the local mission and started getting some auditing. And uh, I was registered, I was regged for the purification rundown, which I did. And uh, I did have some wins with that. I had some wins with my Dianetics auditing and with some of my other earlier auditing. And then Tara and I met through a mutual friend. She was a course supervisor at a WISE group. And WISE, for those who are uninitiated, is the uh, part of Scientology that helps businessmen, uh, promotes itself to business people, uh, particularly doctors and um, dentists, chiropractors, uh, to help them put in the L. Ron Hubbard management technology. Uh, but one of their key stats is uh, the number of people, number of wise members or doctors who they're able to get into Scientology services. So 
I met with my wife, I met my wife there as a course supervisor, and we uh, shortly thereafter got married. And we got together with some common goals. We wanted to uh, progress up the bridge, uh, up the uh, Scientology grade chart, and we wanted to get trained, and we wanted to receive those services all the way up. And even open up a mission. Oh, yeah, that we had goals, goal. right? Big goals of ours were to promote Scientology. And, you know, when I first entered into Scientology, I had some very specific goals that I had set for myself. I didn't want to be, I wanted to be successful in business as a chiropractor. And the reason for wanting that success was to be able to provide a lifestyle for my family, which would include some free time to have with them, vacations, owning a home, and not having financial problems. Those were the goals that I had set forth at that time. But what happened to us as a result of being involved in Scientology is that those goals began to change. And it became the game of moving up the bridge at any cost and promoting Scientology to others uh, at virtually any cost as well. So we lost somewhere along the line what our goals actually were. But to get right into the, the crux of this story, things in Scientology were actually okay at the local level. We had lots of friends at the local org. Uh, there was not a lot of high pressure at our local mission or local org. And we really generally enjoyed that environment. The problems began when we went to the flag service organization. And that was back in, uh, we started with the flag in like 1990, 1991. Mm -hmm. And some of our first services at FLAG were some of the special rundowns. Uh, one of them, I think, was the Prosperity Rundown that I did. Uh, my wife did, uh, Tara, you did something there. I did there. the Prosperity Rundown, mm -hmm. Face Cracking Rundown, just a number of them that were being promoted heavily at the time that they were released, the Knowledge Rundown. Right. Yeah, the, uh, there were several of those special rundowns that we right. did. And, that was really our segue into the uh, flag service organization. And our business was beginning to pick up. We'd been in practice for about four years, four to five years at the time, and had started to accumulate some money. We began paying down a lot of our debts. Um, we had purchased a home. We had a, a nice home on uh, three acres on prime real estate in, the, in Douglas County. And uh, we, things were looking really good. We had all of our equipment in our practice paid for. Uh, we had a very successful, thriving practice at the time, a lot of income coming in. And we had just really started our family. We had two young children at the time. And, you know, we, we lived a lifestyle that wasn't excessive at all. Um, we, we simply put a lot of the money we had into uh, the Church of Scientology. And that was... Uh, you know, going along with the goals that I mentioned earlier. So, when 1994 rolled around, we were just about out of debt. We, we had uh, uh, some student loans left over, and that was about it. Our home uh, was our only real big debt. And so, we went from, we, we went, we decided we wanted to go to FLAG, and, and the goal was for me to go ahead and go through uh, some of the lower OT levels, up to like OT4. And so I'd begun sending money to FLAG for that purpose. And plans began to go into the works about how I was going to stay down there and my business was going to run with me being away. And so we, we had some of our local Scientology friends uh, who were also chiropractors who came to fill in our practice and, and help out during that time. Uh, but to put everything together, um, I got Reg to go ahead and borrow money uh, I had all the equipment that I had paid for, my x-ray machine, my tables in my office, and other things. I went ahead and, and leased, uh, I did a lease buyback of about $17,000. I also uh, borrowed about uh, $10,000 on some of my father's uh, property. I uh, took out a second mortgage on our home, uh, maxed out about, oh, four credit cards. and. Um, put together a little over $50,000 to go down the flag. 
which all of which was uh, borrowed except for the money that I had sent. I'd sent about ten thousand dollars to Flag. Uh, just I had flowed over the past several months before that. So here we were. Uh, I want I want to iterate okay, something on that. Uh, the fact that he went and borrowed like that, that we did, because we went into agreement on borrowing that much money. <clears throat> There's all kinds of financial policies that the church has on how you handle your finances. And basically, the biggest violation of the policy is that you shouldn't be borrowing money to pay bills or to get what you want to get. You should pay with the money you have. You make the money, then you spend it, uh, which makes total sense, and which is how we were operating before. Uh, borrowing was an agreement that we went into with the church's way of regging their technique was to disagree with the physical universe because things will come out a lot bigger, a lot better. We'd be much more prosperous than the amount that we're going into hop for to do these services. So we went into agreement with disagreeing with the physical universe. And however, the physical universe did not agree with us. So, Ed will tell you. Well, what, what happened was that you know, I did the services. Well, actually, I went to Flag. Uh, I was supposed to stay down for about four to six weeks. That was the estimated time that it was going to take me to get through uh, my prep, my OT preps, and my solo, and to get onto the actual levels. And I understood that even if I didn't get through that six weeks, I could come back and finish some of the uh, different levels if I needed to. Well, as it turned out, I stayed at FLAG for about two weeks and started seeing my stats really crashing in the office. And that wasn't really a surprise to me. From me being away from the office, the practice was me. And, and these other doctors, even though they're great doctors, they really could not appeal to my patients uh, on that such, such a short time span. So I didn't not expect that to happen. But I had to make a decision on what was I going to do, because uh, I knew I couldn't stay at Flag very long. And so I started getting regged on the L rundowns, uh, L11 and L12. Uh, L11, the new life rundown, and L12, the OT executive rundown, I think is what it's called. And I had had friends who'd done these processes and done these things, and, and they seemed to like them, and you know, some of them seemed to do okay with them. Uh, others. Who knows, you know, they weren't doing as well, but it was very promoted that these L rundowns were the thing to do to help boom your stats, boom your production, uh, increase your income exponentially. That was the whole promotion that we had heard mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was the doctors from the wise line are prime candidates for these L rundowns. So being that I, I had a limited amount of time, I had limited resources and wanted to get the biggest bang for the buck, so to speak, so I could really get production going. Again, the whole purpose being to increase my stats, my production, my sphere of influence, so that we could do more bridge, have more time, have more money, and be able to do up our OT levels. That was the whole goal. So we started, I started the L rundown, started L11, got through it. Hey, I was feeling pretty good, stats crashing all over the place at home, but I knew I was only going to be there for a finite amount of time and that I could get back and turn the thing around. That was the plan. So I got through L11 and got through L12. And what occurred was at that point, you know, it was time to go home. So I felt great. I thought, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to crank this thing up. So I went into the office and started plugging away, doing, doing what I've been doing for years. And you know, this time it didn't come around. In fact, it started to really go bad. It was uh, pe people weren't responding, people weren't returning uh, back to us. Uh, our office, because of uh, the huge financial pressures we put ourselves under, began to create pressure for the people in it, uh, the staff, the patients, ourselves. Uh, I expected that after the L rundowns, uh, I would be more OT, more stable. I would be happier. Uh, as it turned out, my wife can tell you how I was. Uh, I had my new life. Well, actually, when he came back, he seemed more stressed. 
And I was thinking once, because his attention's on the office, he needs to address that, and then he'll be able to experience his wins from the owls and let me know more about it. Because actually, you couldn't even go into telling me any wins, really, other than it was, it was, uh, he, there really wasn't much communication he could give me on the owls. Um, now, mind you, we just spent fifth, over $50,000. Right. He couldn't share a win. And he wasn't sure. He, he, you know, he wasn't sure, and he figured. He actually, I remember him telling me, give him a couple of days, and maybe the winds will then come to him, or he'll realize something. Or so, anyways, I figured. Well, he's stressed out because of the situation. He's been gone for a couple of weeks. The office stats are down. He'll get it turned back around, as he has in the past, when he has left to go to flag and do services, because that was a something that we were pretty much used to happening when he'd go to flag. However, this time, uh, the stats weren't turning around. Uh, he was uh, more stressed. And uh, it got to the point where I didn't, he, he seemed more solid. And it got to the point where I didn't want him home anymore because he would bring the whole family downtown. We would be having fun. I was keeping two other kids at home along with my three. and. We would just be having a great time being uptown with the kids and I. As soon as Ed get, as soon as he would get home from the office, you would just see this black mass around him. And I literally could get a knife and cut it. It was so thick that I just could not stand to have him in my space. So I would actually get the kids all ready and in bed a little early before he'd get home so that they wouldn't have to experience his solid seriousness. And the kids didn't really know him that much for, I'd say, that period of time because um, we didn't like him, <laughs> to be honest with you. He was no fun. He was a total drag. And I was, uh, he would go back for reviews. Yeah, well, I knew that something was wrong, obviously. Yeah, there was, you uh, know, it was obviously there was something not right here. So, so I went back for reviews and I went back to flag three or four times in the next probably two or three months. And we couldn't afford to do that, but it was sort of like we were trying to patch the holes in a sinking ship to, to make this thing work. You know, I, I knew that, I, and when Tara would ask me how, how, what my wins were, I would say something like, you know, I'm not really sure. You couldn't even get I, me in. I can tell you that I feel different that's for sure, mm -hmm. but I can't really tell you exactly what my wins are right now because I don't really have anything to to compare it to. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm looking for a result here. So, you know, here we were running back. I was running back and forth the flag, doing reviews, doing review after review after review. That we would and, pay for, by yeah, the way. Well, you know, some yeah. of them were on the L. That you know, were on the L's account. But then I had to go get some uh, cramming. And I finally was at Flag, and I, I had actually CSW to have a cramming session with somebody to just get my, my life together. And during the session, it was just funny, I had the realization that, you know, I, I just looked at the cramming officer and I said, you know, I, got, I gotta just ask this question, why am I doing this? And he says, well, he thought I meant, why are we doing the cramming session? And uh, he said, well, we're doing it to clear up any misunderstoods and whatnot. And I said, no, I don't mean that. I mean, why am I doing this? Why am I doing Scientology? I can't figure out why I'm doing it anymore. It obviously isn't helping me. I'm not making any headway in life. As a matter of fact, I'm digging my grave financially. I've mortgaged my family's future. And, you know, he gave me some issues to read and things that were perhaps what a good Scientologist's reasons should be. And I read them and I thought, well, yeah, being OT would be nice. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I've got to get on with life here. So what came of all that was I just resolved that, you know, this Scientology stuff isn't really going to solve my problems. It's not going to help me solve my problems. There must be something else. This was the rationale and the mindset. There must be something else down the road that I need to handle. Uh, maybe the next thing will just open this 
whole abundance of OT abilities that are laying dormant yeah. within me. Um, that, that, by the way, seemed to be a, a standard operating procedure, really, in the way we were thinking on a lot of things. We would hope to gain certain things by doing this course or this level. It wasn't gotten, and we go, well, maybe it's because we'll, we'll hit the right thing on this level or something we're not confronting yet, and it's not at the right level for us to confront yet. Or, you know, there was just always, we were always rationalizing the, the fact that we weren't getting the amount of gains that we expected. And, and to be honest with you, even with the local uh, organization here with the church, there seems to be an air of being very happy all the time, and nobody could really communicate that you really fucked up, or that you really didn't get any wins, or uh, because it wasn't really safe enough to communicate that because everybody's really supposed to be happy, and everybody's really supposed to be doing great, because after all, this is Scientology, and it just seemed like such a farce. It was like a game of pretend. Well, it, yeah. To a degree. And, and the other know? thing was that you couldn't discuss your case with other people. It was off policy. Or you, disagreements. You know, right. Or things, issues that you had. Or uh, you would be written up or reported. Right. Not know? okay to say that. Not okay to talk yeah. about, you know, your wins or your, or, no, you could talk about your wins. You couldn't talk about your dissatisfaction or your lack of results. Just not okay. And, you know, at the time, it was rationalized in our minds as maybe this is something we shouldn't do because it might interbulate somebody or it might make them have a, a hidden standard or something. There was always rationalization, but the truth of the matter is, in hindsight, we can now see that the reason for <coughs> that was that, you know, there's a censorship of what's said and there's a lot of control on the communication lines. And that sort of brings us up to, uh, well, we had an incident, um, too, where we were uh, actually, after the fact, we were still connected uh, to our local org. We didn't go to FLAG anymore, mind you, but we went to our local org, which where I had had some wins in life, and I had no beef against that group. I, they had really tried to help me, and in many ways they had. We went back to that, to our local church and stayed on course, and um, then we got, because of our financial problems, uh, we began to, uh, you know, do other things. I went into multi-level marketing for one thing. I thought, my gosh, I've got to do something else to make some income here. And so um, the person who was running this multi-level marketing activity was uh, a guy who had invented a memory program, a personal development program. And as a result of his connection to that and our connection to him, we were declared enemies of the, uh, of the Church of Scientology by the uh, Continental East U.S. We were uh, declared enemies and told we couldn't do any further services until we uh, stopped being a part of this multi-level marketing group. Uh, all of that, by the way, came off of a Scientology policy directive, uh, which we later found out was an, was an, is an illegal an SPD. policy. It's, a, uh, it's, it's called a, an SPD. Yeah, it's called an SPD. It's an illegal church policy. It's not authorized by L. Ron Hubbard. Mm -hmm. And so that made us kind of go, well, the hell with it. We're just going to lay low. We don't have the money to do this stuff anyway. Let's just, you know, work our business, get our life together, pay off all these horrendous debts, and uh, maybe we'll come back. And our intention was to come back at some point. And then one day I was riding in uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, we were just eating lunch, and, and I could tell he was having a hard time telling me this, but because uh, he'd been part of the church too, and he said, Ed, you know, there's something you really need to see. I, I got some information that uh, came from the Internet about the Church of Scientology, and I think that this is really important for you to read. And it was amazing that when he said that, my feeling and my, my communication to him was, you know, I really don't want to see that. Now, isn't that interesting? Uh, he had information that he felt was important for me to see. And he felt it was truthful, but... I was of the mindset that I can't look at anything that might be some that might even attempt to change my mind about what I was doing. And this is despite the challenges we were having with the church. Yeah, we. I mean, we, we were, were attacked. Still, we were. We were. We went into hot for him to do the owls 
which he had absolutely no case gain on. He actually um, got worse. Uh, and yeah, that was that was my new life. Yeah, this was his new life. And I want my old life back. Was, and then I was actually removed from course on my, I was on level one. So because I was connected, I had basically the guy on the multi-level marketing was not in charge of it. He was in our upline. He was, he was not the owner of this business. Uh, he was a sponsor 12 levels above us. But she got basically I, body routed. I, I got body routed out of the course room and told that I need to disconnect from this guy who I don't even talk to personally. He's just in our upline because he's apparently suppressive. Uh, he's never even been in the church. And then, you know, then we're being labeled enemies because we are in this multi-level marketing group. And we are still loyal to the church. Now that's pretty bizarre. Because yeah. here, we're still not willing to take a look that there might be possibly something that we do need to look at. And and that is even despite the fact that we would observe outpoint after outpoint after outpoint, and even violations of policy that would be violated by management or staff members, and it would be rationalized continuously in my head, even as a staff member. But you know, I, I kind of got ahead of ourselves. We we should just make a make it clear what actually occurred in our lives as a result of all of this going into hawk and me getting my my new my new life and my uh, stable you know ot abilities um we began to fall behind on our bills and this is in 1990 uh early 1995 i got off the l's in uh, i think it was september of 94 and uh just shortly thereafter we began to fall behind on our bills and behind on our rent uh, six behind, months. behind, we were six months behind on on our bills. Uh, in early 1995, we fell behind on our mortgage six months. Um, we, um, you know, I wasn't actually handling the bills because it was too interbulating. I, I wanted to stay in the practice. So Tara was the one who took all the phone calls, put the stayed the creditors off, held them off, you know, threw them a bone now and then to kind of keep them off our backs. And um, I remember when things started to really come apart for us. And that, let, let me um, explain something. This is to give you some specific examples of the stress level. There would be times we'll just see a flash uh, like headlights. There was one evening, headlights drove up our, our driveway, and it was only to drive up and back out and go the other direction. But Ed hops up, panics, thinking it's uh, the water man or the gas man to turn it off because we were so behind on the bill. Um, I had uh, this guy knock on our door at midnight. We're already in bed. Sunday night. Yeah. Sunday night at midnight, knocking on my door to take my van away or to pay right then and there. No, I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, so there and, and then Ed goes to the office one morning only to find this gentleman from the IRS putting locks and chains on his door. And so, I mean, there were some very hairy moments of, of stress. And then I took all the bills, which I'd never handled before, to try and keep all the intrigulation off his plate so that he can put his focus and attention on production and, and making things go. And so now all this interpolation's on me trying to handle the screaming predators, the, uh, the threats. Well, during that time, we, we were three years behind. Uh, actually, we had gotten so behind, uh, this is further up the track, on our taxes as a result of Scientology uh, donations right. that we had liens on our bank accounts. Uh, we had lien on our house. Um, and we had to make a decision about how are we going to live, how are we going to do this. We did really bankruptcy for us was not an option that we wanted to take. We we talked to many many different uh, attorneys about this, and I just didn't feel like we needed to do that. Uh, we did need to, technically speaking, but that we could really live with that and doing that to the people who had trusted us with their money. So, what we did as a solution for this 
was I said, Tara, we just can't keep the house. You know, here we had this house, we had equity in it, um, but we did have equity, we'd borrowed against it, so it was all leveraged out. And I said, you know, we're going to have to lose the house. We're just going to have to leave. We can't stay here. We've got to just regroup. Uh, all the equipment that I had previously paid for and I had borrowed against, I had to lose all the equipment. We, we actually, within one week's time, moved my office, lost, had our equipment repoed, um, lost our house, and moved into a suburban inn with our three children. And one of them was just an infant. He had just been, uh, been born. And, you know, we'd had our bank accounts levied by the IRS, um, which <laughs> I managed to, managed to get out of that uh, somehow. And um, maybe that was the OT ability. I talked to the IRS agent, and yeah, she gave me, the, she, she took the pressure off that. That was what I got from L12. Um, and the prosperity rundown. Yeah, and the prosperity rundown. So here we were penniless, and we were living in a suburban inn with our children. And I am this chiropractor in town. I had, uh, had to make an arrangement with a friend of mine who was in town, same town as me, to go into his office. And, we managed to work this out, and I went in and started practicing in his office the very next day. I couldn't afford to miss one day, one day of production. Yeah. Because we were, at times, hard-pressed to afford to eat during that period of time, to put yeah. gas in our cars. Uh, we were wearing clothes that were four and five years old. Our children, we were buying their clothes at Goodwill. Um, I had a $2 blazer that my wife bought me so I could look good when I was out speaking about the benefits of chiropractic. Uh, so we... Another thing that, that, that uh, is interesting, and I'm sure there's going to be, maybe there's going to be some Scientologists watching this video right now. And I know that the, the viewpoint is, and, and we have this idea and this feeling that, that something's wrong with us. We would never look at the idea or the fact that it could possibly be an inkling that something's wrong with the church or the way that they're delivering this technology or maybe there's an alteration in what the tech used to be but we would always introvert and look well we've got all these overts or we're just bad or you know we're, well, you know of course you would introvert on what's wrong with me and we did do that because generally when you're a good person you do do that and so uh, we were totally, at that point in time, going through all that, we were still trying to make the church right. Yeah. And, 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 and that's wrong. Right. And that's, no, way, we that's what we did. And that was how we operated, because we certainly didn't want to be a victim. I mean, you know, nobody wants to be a victim. But we had not acknowledged that, you know, we had been truly, we had been victimized by this suppressive element in our lives that was taking all of our money, all of our time, all of our attention, and, um, and, and putting us in a position where we were running that on our customers and our clients just to survive. Um, but anyway, what happened as a result, we moved out of the suburban lodge and we had uh, to move in with my parents. We couldn't afford to stay outside and pay rent anywhere. Uh, we couldn't afford anything. We were so far behind. So we moved in with my parents. Now here I was, a 35-year-old uh, doctor and who'd been in practice at that time for eight years. And I'm living with my parents again. So you can imagine... With his family. Uh, yeah, with, with my wife and my three children. Um, we had discussed buying a mobile home and living in a mobile home trailer in a trailer park. Uh, my, my dad said, well, hey, why don't you build out an apartment in our basement and you guys just stay here till you get everything together. Now, they really didn't know what was going on with us. Um, we had kind of snowed it over, gave them the, uh, the old Scientology acceptable truth that, uh, hey, you know, we just hit some rough times here and this is just, you know, something that happens in business and made my, bad investments. Made bad investments and yeah, yeah acceptable yada, yada. truth, you know. Yada, yada. So we uh, we told them all about that and said, uh, you know, can we just stay down here till we get our financial lives together? Now that was back in uh, 1997. Now, now I just want to uh, let you know and experience some of the stress level of that, because here we were living in their home, sharing. Uh, 
the office, he and I slept in the office room where they have a trundle bed, and my three kids were in a, in a bedroom in their home. And, of course, I, uh, I started working at the office, too, to try and help turn things around. So I would, uh, I would get up in the morning, try to make breakfast for my kids, and I can remember being turned around facing the stove, flipping pancakes as I'm crying. And then I would wipe my tears, turn around with a smile, and serve my pancakes to the kids. We're happy yeah. Scientologists. We're happy. <laughs> and then, I, you know, any moment I had to myself, I was a wreck. But the, any moment I was in, among the family, I had to keep that smile. And that was so stressful to go to work, tend to the kids, clean her house because I felt like I needed to keep some exchange in. And then at about at, at the time that the kids would go down to bed, 8.30, 9 o'clock, we'd go down to the basement and be, you know, putting up walls, paintings. It was very stressful. It was a constant ha having to produce... To, to keep the family happy, keep my in-laws happy by trying to keep their home clean because the babysitter I had hired uh, when they'd be out of school didn't always keep the place clean. So I would have to come home, clean up her house, then do dinner, get the kids in bed, then go downstairs and paint for several hours and we'd start again. And I know some of you might be saying, oh, you know, play a little violin for the for the poor chiropractor and his wife who made the stupid decisions. But, you know, you got to understand, I mean, we, we're intelligent people. We've been around, uh, you know, I went through eight years of college, you know, and this is not something that just is, is, a, is a stupid thing to do, but it's one of those things that just was so subtle and insidious that we fell into this trap and we lost everything. We literally lost everything that we had and uh, our credit which was triple A I mean plus 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 we could buy anything we wanted uh, on credit if we wanted to mm -hmm. and, and that was gone I mean absolutely gone we had uh, judgments I would meet the sheriff on the way out the driveway um, with the kids taking them to school you know here comes the sheriff driving up giving me another uh, judgment or another um, you know serving me to uh, appear in court and we were being sued left and right. Uh, we had a sheriff would come into the office with patients there. And <laughs> well, that would be embarrassing. Well, it happened. It happened several times. It was. <laughs> so, you know, it's, and, and we kind of got to the point where we had everybody snowed into thinking, well, you know, we just we had to make some decisions, and we decided we wanted to live in the country and live out with, uh, you know, while we built our house. Well, that was uh, that was five years ago. <laughs> And uh, we're sitting in the basement now, still. Uh, we still live in my parents' basement. And I'm now, uh, uh, you know, still trying to get the practice together. It, it's going better, believe me. It's, it's taken time. Things are going better. But we're still living in the basement. We have borrowed furniture. This furniture we're sitting on, actually this furniture we're sitting on, we bought about uh, eight years ago. Uh, I have a table, kitchen table, a dinette set that... Um, when I was in college, I actually found uh, sitting by the dumpster, and I said, hey, that looks good. And I was in my uh, second year of college, so I painted it, and hey, that's our dining room table. Now, we've got chairs that have holes in them that we have pads over that we sit at the table to eat. Uh, if you lean one way, though, they might <laughs> collapse. Um, we, but the uh, veneer is nice. It, it yeah. looks nice. I've painted it nice, but oh sure. Oh, we uh, you know we would love to give somebody a, a tour of our off, of our home here. Um, <laughs> we've made the best of things. Although I will say this, that it's very very interesting what happened to open my eyes. And I'll go. I'll pick up where I left off. My buddy was telling me about this information on the internet he'd seen, and I wasn't willing to look at it. Well, about four or five weeks later, I just said, you know, to hell with this. Uh, I'm a Scientologist. Sure, surely I can evaluate data. I can look at information, decide if it's true. And if, hey, if it's true, it's true. What's, what's the difference? If the church is everything it's supposed to be, the truth is going to come out in the end. So I started looking at this information. Now, I didn't tell my wife, I didn't tell Tara about this. I just began looking at the information, and it was. Uh, it directed me to different websites, and I began reading the stories of some of the past Scientologists. Now, some of these people are just blatant critics who never really did anything with Scientology. They just don't have anything better to do than to 
to raise hell at somebody, so they do it with the church. And maybe it's, maybe it's rightfully so. But there were some genuine stories of people, just like myself, who'd had similar situations come up in their lives. So I began to get interested in what, what they had to say. And I started looking into the church and what the church was doing. And at that stage, since it had been a few years since we were online, we began to become more aware of outpoints that we'd never looked at before. We began to talk to each other. And there was a time in our marriage when if my wife had said something to be critical about the church, I would have had to written her up. And, and, vice and versa. would have. <laughs> and would have written her up. And she would have written me up. That's pretty dead. Matter of fact, you probably wrote me up for it, didn't you? Blind. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> that's how loyal we were. But we had gotten to the point where we said, you know, there's something not quite right. We're just going to weigh it out and let it kind of clear, let the air clear, and then we'll go back. Keep a low profile. Keep a low profile. Don't make any waves. It was noisy. Yeah. People were actually declared suppressive. For being in the multi level. Because thing. they were yeah. in this. Yeah. But anyway, we, we, we got, I started looking on the internet and I found information that opened my eyes. And what really got me off and totally changed my mind was when I saw that the current management of the church is altering the technology. They actually have altered books. I, I didn't believe this at first, so I went and grabbed some of my books. And I had some of the little thin, remember the little thin green books? The old ones. Yeah, the old ones. I took those. When LRH was still alive. When LRH lines. was still alive. And I took those books and I started to compare them with the new books. Now you might say, well, yeah, but they found other information. And maybe they did. But they would actually change the words in the sentences. And yeah. as I was looking at that, I took one of the books, I think it was New Slant on Life. And I opened it up. And I, within about five minutes, I'd found three or four alterations. And I, that's when I confronted, my, confronted Tara. I said, Tara, you know, I know you don't want to look at this, but you've got to see what I just found. And when I showed her that, I think it took you all of five minutes to say, what? You were done. Yeah, that was it. That was it. I mean, that, to me, that was the ultimate. That is the ultimate over, you know, when you're altering the technology. And not only that, there was alterations constantly on, on uh, capitalizations and commas and to, to s put the stresses in the wrong words. But yeah, that's the, the that's, that could be almost rationalized. But, but that's just it, is that with the church, the one thing you really learn and you really get is you don't get reasonable on anything, especially KSW, keeping Scientology working, which is don't alter tech at all. Right, but it wasn't just comments. I mean, we're talking this about actual words, words phrases, phrases, deleted data, yeah. lots of deleted data. So it's it's hard to miss when you've got omitted lines, omitted paragraphs, omitted pages, omitted information off of tapes, like the study tapes. Yeah, I mean, I've altered, got the, okay, grossly altered. I've got the old study tapes that LRH did, and I've got the new study tapes that are missing a lot of the old study tape information. Including a and, whole tape. And this is all verifiable, folks. I mean, um, hat. you know, if you want to get this information, um, just email me. I mean, this is my email address again. Here you go. See, and, the, this um, isn't something that we're just being, giving you generalities on. This is, a, this is something that you could easily just prove to yourself by looking at the data and just seeing it for yourself. That is what it did for me, because if he would have had me uh, hear him or read somebody else's viewpoint or, or information, I would have kept my eyes shut, and I would have, like, we probably would have been divorced by now. Yeah, because basically you the know? church policy is you have to disconnect from suppressive people, and I was going in the direction of um, being that way. Um, you know, and, and then after this, and after we had made the decision that, you know what, this stuff isn't working for us. There's something wrong with this church. Uh, it's not, I mean, there is a problem here. After we made the decision that we're just going to, like, disconnect, um, we had some friends who uh, we had known for years who were loyal Scientologists who went all the way up through OT7 uh, and what 
They did. And a matter of fact, one of them went on to OT8. <coughs> they started to challenge the OT7 six-month check because they found a policy uh, that was specifically about this six-month check. They challenged it. It's a technical bulletin. It's a technical bulletin that they were using. And um, they found that that bulletin had been altered. And uh, so they began pushing on this line and shortly thereafter became declared. And the last conversation I had with a reg at flag on the phone was that, hey, I have some friends who got all the way up to OT7 and then they became suppressive. You tell me what's right about that. If the tech really works, if you're really making OTs, how the hell does somebody go all the way up the bridge, contribute all kinds of money to causes, and pay for all of that, and then become suppressive? Or become deathly ill. Yeah, which we have a friend. We have a friend who, who just looks is, like he's on he's his way gaunt. to death row. Yeah, he is just yeah. emaciated, and he's on OT7. And, you know, you got to look at that. And we finally just went, you know, there's just something wrong here. It's something badly wrong. Our lives after going to flag and doing the super powerful L rundowns became a complete financial disaster. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I, I'm through with looking at myself and going, you know, maybe it's just me. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm okay. My wife's okay. You know what we found when we learned as an, as this, through this disaster and this calamity? We found out who our real friends were. We found out the people who mattered to us were the people who would stand by us no matter what happened. And we learned who those people were. And yeah, there were one or two of our friends who were Scientologists who are still our friends. But by and large, the people who called themselves our friends won't speak to us now, won't call us. Uh, they avoid us. They are disconnecting. As when this comes out, I'm sure they're going to hear all kinds of things about us. Um, mostly, We're going to be popular. Well, we know <laughs> we know about the church's policy on uh, you know fair game. I'm sure we're going to become fair game. Um, our attorney is going to have a copy of this tape and the date that we made it, so that you know we can defend ourselves against slander and libel. But that's the way the church operates. They will try to defamate us. They will try to uh, create problems in our lives, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we understand that. Believe me, we have nothing to lose. I live in my parents' basement. <laughs> we have absolutely nothing I to mean, lose. I mean, what are you going to do? Make my <laughs> landlord kick me out? No, my mommy won't kick me out of her house. Uh, she had a hard time understanding why I'm still there four or five years later. But she's not going to kick me out of her house, so no, we've got nothing you, to lose. I'll tell you what is ironic about all this. Is, uh, one piece of tech of the church is uh, potential trouble sources and suppressiveness. And the, the tech that you learn about is that when you're connected to suppression, you, you start to have all kinds of problems in life. And so it's ironic that... The, the tech comes from the very church that was altered, by the way, that we became potential trouble with the connection because our lives literally started to go into trouble and end it. Yeah, the more connected we the were The more connected we were, the flag. harder and the worse our lives became. And the harder we kept a veneer on that things were going well and that we were successful because we were trying to portrayed the successful image of a Scientologist. Right, and we were, we were, <clears throat> we were we having weren't. to keep that image up because we didn't want to, you know, I actually wrote a letter, I still have a copy of it, that I wrote to my auditor and had her route to the CS that said, you know, I don't want to have the image of being a Scientologist. I don't want to start a mission. I don't want to disseminate until I can get my life together because right now I don't feel like I'm being what a Scientologist should be mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what I have and what I can do in life and, and what I can affect. But when we disconnected Our from the church, yeah. when we said, that's it, no more, our lives began to change in a very positive direction. Drastically. I was happier. I became less stressed. My business began to expand. Opportunities began to show up. 
income started to increase. Bills began to be paid off. And we've got money now in the bank. We're going to be building a home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's great. So what does that tell you? I mean, what does that tell me? Should I go back to the church of Scientology? I don't think so. I'll tell you what was the thing that sold me on leaving. And at this point, all I can say is that, you know, we've, we've spoken uh, long enough. We've really told our whole story. Wouldn't you agree? In we, a nutshell. We, we didn't exactly. give you all the gory details, but I think you get the idea. Um, L11, L12, um, life changing, uh, I would have to say. Um, <laughs> uh, no doubt about that. Life changing, um, <laughs> but not in the direction that... Uh, that I would want to go. Uh, you know, if it hadn't changed my life at all, I would just feel a little bit jilted, you know, that I paid $50,000 for nothing. Uh, actually, what I bought with that $50,000 was a complete disaster in my life that, um, you know, I'm just thankful that I have a, a wife who's understanding, uh, children who, you know, right. are, are young enough that yeah. they don't really get all that's happened to us. We've made it the best for them, uh, but parents who have been extremely patient with us, and they don't even know the story. I mean, we've just been too ashamed to really admit <laughs> that we were so duped. That we've been duped that big we, time. We, we, we were, were such, blind. Such <laughs> uh, suckers for this, this whole game. Yeah. So all I can tell you is that, you know, if you want to t contact us, we will be glad to talk to you, uh, and we're not going to charge you any money. I mean, <laughs> it's all, for free. all we want to do is just set things straight. You know, and there'll be no red cycles. Yeah, either. we're not going to red you. Mm -hmm. We're not going to try to convince you. You need to do what we did, but I'll, uh, I'd be glad to share with you where we found our information, and it, you can evaluate it for yourself. Uh, I would love to still have friends who are in the church. Um, there were some nice people I met who I feel like are genuine. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't have any furniture. But they were genuine people, you know. They, <laughs> they some drove great uh, staff 20 year old cars. Great staff members. <laughs> Couldn't hardly keep gas Poor in Poor as, as can be, but great people. Yeah, wonderful people. I, you know, if they were my neighbors, I, I'm sure I'd, you know, loan them a cup of sugar. But the thing you got to realize is that these people aren't, they don't have stats in their own life. They, mm -hmm. they, they are white. And, you know, maybe there's some virtue in that. But, that's not why I got into it. I got into it to become more successful. I spent a lot of money and a lot of time to try to achieve that goal. And what I wound up with was an empty shell in my own life and the life of my family. And it's taken us a good five years to get things back. It's actually now been, since 1994, 2001, it's been uh, seven years now that it's taken us to actually begin the recovery process. We've actually just reached a new foundation. We, yeah. we were below foundation. We were still six feet under right. and for then, those five years. And we are just now on the surface building a foundation. We're just now at that point which we can now breathe. Right. And it feels good. The stress is gone. We're enjoying life. It's a, it's a lot yeah, more we, fun. We've just now begun to achieve some goals. We've taken some vacations with our children. We've paid off some of our bills. We still have um, uh, many tens of thousands of dollars in debt that we borrowed against Scientology and uh, we're hoping that this year we'll be able to pay all those debts off and finally put this whole thing behind us. Um, we're, we're making this video primarily as just a way of cleaning the, the slate for us. We, we really waited a long time to, to tell our story. And the story we had really planned on telling was still going to be a little bit of fabrication. I mean, we were going to tell people how we lost money through bad investments. But, you know what, we're just going to tell the truth. We, we invested in a, an idea. We invested in um, this whole self-improvement cult. And that's what caused our lives to be what they became during these past seven years, a financial calamity. I remember my accountant just... Uh, being in shock over the amounts of money I was giving to uh, this, church. this church. And, you know, I look back at that and I think, you know, boy, you know, he must have really had to, had to toned it down 
to have even talked to me. Uh, my parents, uh, uh, they were in utter shock. They couldn't understand why. What are you doing? What's the problem? My brother once, one of my brothers once told me, what, whatever you need, you know, if you need to get out of this thing, I, I can get friends and we can help you to leave this thing. And they were genuinely concerned. I was oblivious. Uh, I should have listened to them. And in retrospect, um, I probably should have done a lot of things differently. But here we are. We're done. Uh, if you need to contact us, again, my email address, please, uh, you know, respond. And if you've got criticisms, fine. You know, I, I'm fine with that. And if you need um, to send the uh, knowledge reports or a declaration of suppression, this right. is where just, you can just, You can that. just forward our SP declare there. Yeah. And, It'll be okay. I Make mean, sure it's we, framed. Yeah, we're going to frame it. It's all right. You know, I know our eternity we're, is We're going to be is, proud is of done. that one. Yeah, our eternity <laughs> is done. And if you talk to us, I know some of you won't be able to, um, hold on to this video and, you know, don't watch it for five years. Then watch it again. And, and maybe then you will have the realization that, hey, you know, maybe they were right. So, um, hey, we don't say Scientology doesn't help some people. Obviously, uh, it does help some people. It's just that it does hurt people, too. And uh, it certainly has been that for us. And so uh, I think we're all done with this video. Yeah. Okay. Feel good, Matt. Have a great life.